Should try the red one. Great shooting, girl. Boom. Hello, everyone. The Kentucky Patriot here. Out on the range today. Super hot, super humid. Uh, it's been raining, but we did get a little break in the rain, so I'm sorry if it's uh, uh, kind of dark because it is getting later in the evening. And like I said, there is an overcast. It has been raining. Uh, but we were just going to uh, try uh, something I had in mind uh, with a 45 ACP. Um, I was going to see the difference between a, a full metal jacket and a hollow point with a 45 ACP. And we're going to try it on some water jugs here. Uh, I, we understand this isn't the most scientific experiment there is. Uh, but we've got a couple layers of denim with some uh, water jug set up here And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot twice with a full metal jacket And then I'm going to set up some more water jugs and shoot two more times with the hollow points uh, The reason I kind of wanted to do this is how important really is it in a 45 caliber ACP? Um, to have hollow points because What a hollow point does upon impact is supposed to expand and uh, what they call mushroom out and it, it, it makes the projectile larger, but it slows down penetration. So there's a couple things with a 45 ACP. One is you're already shooting a big bullet. So how much expansion do you really need? And will expansion uh, prevent the uh, 45 from going deep enough to, uh, in, in the threat? So if you're using a 45 for uh, self-defense, this may be something you're interested in. Uh, at least it, uh, it got my attention. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but we've been busy and ain't had a chance to get out here. Uh, but now, this will also uh, depend on your gun uh, because uh, I'm using the 5 inch uh, Colt, uh, you know, the, the standard government size model, the 5 inch. But now, if you begin to shorten that barrel in like a commander size or uh, some of these uh, other guns, I know like Smith & Wesson's making the shield and Glock is making. So, the shorter the barrel, you may not get these same results. But this is the full size uh, Colt uh, government model that we're going to be uh, testing today. So, uh, I got my wife here on the camera. Got some water jugs set out. I'm going to hit it a couple times with full metal jacket. I'll try to recover the bullets and let's see how it works. Let's check it out. Now, I have heard people say that the 45 uh, isn't a good round for self defense ACP. Now, you, you, you see here, went through two layers of denim. Look at here. Look at the second jug, the third jug. Show them the last one, buddy. I've got a little Kentucky Patriot out here, and I want to show you this. This went through five layer, uh, five bottles of uh, water, gallon jugs, plus the two layers of denim. Now that is with the full metal jacket. So kind of the te the test is, or the or, or the study is, maybe in your area is different, but you can't hardly find. I can't. I don't even order them online. Maybe, but uh, I still have pretty good luck with them. But any of the stores I went to here locally. I could not find a 45 ACP hollow point in like the white box. All you could find was like the Hornady. I think I got the American gun around with this, you know, but uh, you know, you got that, the, the all defensive rounds is what, what you have. But the test basically I was wanting to, to see today is do you really have to have hollow points in your 45? And now, and people say, well, the 45 is such a slow moving bullet. You don't have to worry about over penetration. Well, with a full metal jacket, let me tell you, over penetration can be achieved because that's five. Uh, water jugs and I know I was shooting very close but most of the time for a self-defense or concealed carry situation you are in close quarters so uh, I, I know you know we can test it farther out but I think honestly uh, I, know, I know what the FBI says about an average confrontation but really uh, it, it's going to be a close quarters so that's why I shot as close as I did but you can see here the full metal jacket now all five and it done some damage to that water so I'm, I'm not going to argue with anybody, but I'm just telling you, me personally, I said, you got to watch over penetration. I would not care a bit to carry a 45 government model, um, 45 ACP, full metal jacket, and, and feel safe. That's just me. Now, let's try the jacket at hollow points. Let's see how they do compared to uh, the full metal jacket. This is the same drill, except instead of the uh, full metal jacket, I'm going to be using the hollow point. And again, I'm pretty close, uh, but again, I think this is a realistic uh, uh, distance for a self-defense confrontation, maybe even closer, because if a target to me is much farther than this, then you can break contact and get away. So this is, to me, pretty realistic. Exact same drill, except this time with the uh, hollow points instead of the full metal jacket.
Now you can see, of course, it had no problem with the denim. The initial, got a little bit of denim in there. The initial impact was devastating. I was close. I don't know how well you can see. It's kind of getting dark out, but I'm absolutely drenched. It was uh, very impressive. I'm going to take these earplugs out so I'm not hollering at you. Uh, but you can see here, it still absolutely devastated this. Um, and in case anybody's worried about it not going deep enough, uh, it, it, with the expansion, it sure did. And I was hoping to retain it in the fifth jug, but as you can see, it went all the way through. Um, so, <laughs> as you can see, and we, we don't try to, you know this channel by now, we don't try to argue with anybody or, or, or cause any contentious um, uh, feedback or anything like that, but I've heard a lot of people here on a lot of different channels and in, and people tell you that the 45 isn't uh, as good around for self-defense. I, I don't understand what they're talking about. It served the military for uh, over 70 years. The 1911, the 5-inch government model, is a wonderful platform. And uh, you can see, even with the full metal jacket, and I don't want you to think I'm hypocritical because I told you in another video a while back, about, buy good ammo. Make sure you get good ammo. And uh, and I still believe that in 9 and you know some of your other smaller calibers. But in a 45 if you don't want to spend the extra money that's up to you i wouldn't be as worried about buying the hyper ammo or the expensive ammo or the great ammo i'm worrying about expansion and uh, you know make sure it much because you're already shooting a big 230 grain ball so as you can see uh the five the water stops bullets as you know it's very dense went through now even the hollow point went through five jugs so over penetration can be achieved with any round just about so be careful about over penetration but as you can see here the full metal jacket went through five of them very devastating round up close um, <clears throat> the hollow points you can see the devastation again from this jug i mean it just busted it wide open it got me soaked the gun soaked everything else so you can see here that it's a it's a very capable round i'm not promoting the 45 because uh, i'm gonna go back to the house and tell you some pros and cons real quick uh, but I'm not saying that uh, the, the 45 is what you should do, but what I'm telling you is if that's what you carry, don't let anybody tell you that it, it, it's old or it's outdated or it's too slow. Uh, you know, let me tell you, the 45 is a great round. And you can see, because people say it moves too slow, it won't have enough penetration. You can see penetration will be just fine. So uh, we're going to head back to the house, try to take me a shower and shave because I tell you it is hot out here so may God bless you the Kentucky Patriot we'll see you in a few minutes we're back from the range well, we had a good day the weather uh, uh, quit rain still extremely humid and hot but the uh, uh, rain stopped long enough for to us to make a video and we're thankful for that uh, <clears throat> we just wanted to make that video uh, you know we hear things and, we, and we've been seeing videos and there's like this trend uh, that the 1911 is uh, uh, dated or the 45 is not a viable round anymore and and you hear a lot of things and I really just don't th believe that's true at all uh, Because they'll say things like well a 45 is moving so slow in a hollow point uh, That when you might not get expansion and then if you do get expansion It won't penetrate deep enough into the because you know the FBI protocol They like a, uh, 12 inches in, in the ballistics gel you won't get enough penetration and then others say well if you use a full metal jacket, you'll get enough penetration, uh, but you won't get any expansion, which is true. But when you're shooting a 230 grain bullet, I don't think expansion is quite as uh, important as if you're shooting a, a, a smaller grain uh, projectile. But anyway, uh, we don't mean to be redundant. Uh, we're not trying to keep repeating ourselves. But if you've not seen our other videos, we want you to realize that I don't own a gun store. Uh, I'm not a gunsmith. I don't make custom 1911s. I have no reason to tell you anything other than it's just the things that we hear, we're trying to dispel the myth. So I'm not trying to sell you anything or persuade you to carry a 45 or persuade you not to carry a 45. But when we hear things like that, that uh, a 45 is not a viable round for self-defense anymore, uh, I don't know if that's just a trend or people's uh, repeating what they've heard somebody else say, but uh, as you've seen, the full metal jacket done a lot of devastation and it went through five rounds and it tore up those jugs pretty good. The hollow point, uh, it devastated that first jug. As you as you seen, went through all five jugs. And uh, even though the big, and now, 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 let me tell you this though, the uh, hollow point was not 230 grain. Uh, I actually wanted a white box uh, hollow point, but I couldn't find any. 
Uh, so what what I've done is I, I I got this American Gunner from Hornady. This is a 45 auto, 185 grain uh, with the XT uh, XTP tip. I'm sorry uh, for the American Gunner from Hornady. And uh, you seen uh, that was the hollow point round that it, when it hit, it devastated that uh, uh, jug and still had enough penetration to go through all five jugs. And then the uh, 230 grain ball ammo we were shooting from Arms Corps. Uh, play what you're shooting at the range, your target ammo. It's good ammo. It's just not really what's considered defensive ammo. Uh, and like I said, I, if it was me personally and I was going to carry a 1911, I would probably go ahead and spend a little extra and go ahead and get the hollow points. Or if you can find the white box, th those will work good too. Uh, but really, I'll be honest with you. Not, again, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Uh, if I didn't have the extra money to spend on the box, or just this is all I had, and I felt like I had to carry a 1911 with uh, ball ammo, 230 grain, seven, eight rounds, I would feel perfectly uh, content and safe to, to, to carry that, protecting myself and my family. I wouldn't feel like I was uh, unarmed or I wouldn't be able to defend myself or it wouldn't do the job. I honestly believe that's a myth. And it's not only because I like 1911s, uh, I, I think the demonstration today uh, kind of uh, proves and backs up what I was saying. And the people like different guns, and I understand that different platforms. Uh, but I really don't understand this too. We hear this too that 1911s aren't any good, or or they're dated, or or they're terrible for defense, and and they have have a proven record like no other gun. And John Moses Brown, we learn the history of it. I think it makes you even appreciate it more. Come out with that design in 1911, and when you go back in history and read why he designed it, and it has served our military for over 70 years, and there's still units that use it. And uh, there's still people that love to go to the range and carry this gun. It's a phenomenal gun, and it's a beautiful gun. And I'm a huge 1911 fan. And again, I don't uh, uh, you know, want to offend anybody or cause any problems on here. But to me, in my opinion, the 1911 is the greatest gun that has ever been invented. It really is. And uh, not only the look and feel and the shootability, uh, but to, to, to say that it, it's no longer viable to me is, is just not true at all. And uh, something else I, I want to point out on 1911, you may be familiar with, I know a lot of gun guys are, but when people, especially getting in the news to conceal carry, uh, you know, about round chambered or unchambered, when you look at a 1911, this may be another option for you. When, now, I'll show you my gun's empty. You can see that. But when you uh, charge around, this is what they call, this is the safety here, the thumb safety. It's real big, real easy to manipulate. This is called locked. And cocked. So here's the thing: on a 1911, you can carry one in the chamber, and you still got an active safety. So you can pull that trigger, and nothing's going to happen here. Here's another feature: it's kind of neat. It's called the grip safety. And what that is, of course, you're supposed to carry with a uh, holster over the trigger guard. Okay, but even if this trigger is depressed right here, this gun will not fire until this grip safety is charged. Okay. So when you grip this, the grip safety has to be gripped. And then it, it, when you draw the gun from concealment or ever how your duty, ever how you do it, when you come up like this, see that your thumb's right here anyway, all you have to do is and pull the trigger. Because you've already got the grip safety engaged, then it's just pull this and then pull the trigger. And that way you can carry it around in the chamber without fe feeling unsafe. Uh, that's just an option for you uh, on a 1911 that I, that I really like. And this thumb safety is not like some of those I've told you about, like the slide release that's hard to manipulate. You, you, you can manipulate this very easily, male or female, uh, rain, sleet, snow, it, it, it's, and that, that's the way the military carries it, uh, was locked, what they call locked and cocked. And uh, I love the 1911, the look, the feel. Now me personally, uh, it, it's too big for me to carry. I would never try to, I mean, an ankle holster just doesn't even make, I mean, there, there's no way for me. Uh, I couldn't even imagine. Uh, it or even inside the waistband. But even a gun like this is pretty big, uh, even outside the waistband. So, uh, me personally, I, it's a little bit big for carry. Now, it's different for duty, but carry gets a little bit big. So, but to say that that round isn't uh, uh, capable or, or you feel like you're, uh, not going to be able to defend yourself. I, I certainly don't believe that at all. And I, and I do want to show you this. Now, on a striker fired gun like the one I had in my videos, other ones, uh, does not have a safety at all. Uh, they got, you know, maybe some internal safeties and the trigger is, is 
uh, I don't know if you can see what they call a hinge trigger. So that, that's kind of your safety, but it doesn't have an active safety. You keep your finger off the trigger, that's the active safety. And uh, you know, sometimes people carry, if they outside the waistband, they lock one in the chamber, but if it's concealed inside the waistband, carrying one in the chamber is a little uneasy for them with a striker fired gun because if you're sitting down in a seat like this and somebody gets on you trying to get to your gun, if something would happen, you'd hit that trigger, then you could shoot yourself and it could really be here on the inside of the femoral artery or uh, down through the leg or in other places that could really be bad. So on a, con a concealed carry, a lot of times inside the waistband, people won't put one in the chamber. And again, I'm not for or against it, whatever you decide. But what I uh, <clears throat> do kind of caution you is these guns right here, because I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not doing this for the video. I'm honestly having a hard time locking that safety. Okay, and this is Smith & Wesson Shield. I love this gun. This is a great gun, but I'm not crazy about active safeties on a um, carry gun, uh, especially a striker fire, unless, now, I do understand the issue with, with if you're carrying appendix style. But other than that, if you're carrying any other way, I'm not crazy about a um, active safety. Now, this is just me, and I, I'll tell you why, is because, uh, it's hard to get, the, the safety itself activates real easy. It's not the safety, it's not that at all. It's my thumb getting enough surface area and grip to activate it or deactivate it. So if people that want to have safeties on their carry gun, I would lean more toward the 1911 style instead of this because me personally, I'm, I don't feel comfortable in being able to get to that safety if my life depends on it. If somebody has me by the throat and I'm trying to defend myself, I don't want to be trying to disengage that safety. I honestly do not feel comfortable enough to be able to do that when my life's in danger or if it's cold or it's raining. And now people will tell you what's real simple. Uh, if you've got a safety like this, just turn it off and don't ever turn it on. And I understand that, but I'm just telling you the odds are probably slim, but especially if it's a woman, is it possible that they could accidentally engage that safety while it was in their purse or uh, from day to day? You could always check that, but I'm just saying there is a slim chance, it's probably not a very good chance, but it could accidentally activate without you realizing it. Then you come up when your life depends on, on a dead trigger, that, 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 that's a bad day. Then, then you try to disengage that safety. So this is just my opinion. If you like an active safety on your gun, that's totally up to you. But I, I would kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, <clears throat> that's just you know my, my thoughts and my opinions. Uh, but like I said, on a 1911 style, you won't have a bit of problem with, with the thumb safety. I mean, it's right there, it's huge, it's big. You won't have a bit, bit of problem with it. And if you've never shot a 1911, uh, uh, I really think you, you'll enjoy it because you can shoot a big 45 round uh, and because of the weight and the size and the five inch barrel, your follow up shots are quick. Uh, it's easy to get on target. Now this gun actually came with um, other sides. I think it was blue, green, maybe yellow but I like the red because they, they stick out so well. So if you want quick follow-up shots, that's easy to get on target. I absolutely love a 1911. Paul Harrell helped me decide on this one and uh, it's this the Colt competition and I absolutely uh, love it. So I appreciate Paul Harrell for that. And a lot of times people give you opinions on guns and they mean well, but they've not shot them enough or been around them enough. I and mean, you can't go to the range and shoot a half a box of shells and know where finger is and know about a certain style of gun. I mean, so, but I uh, appreciate Paul for helping me on, on my decision. But uh, uh, one more thing I will want to caution you about a 1911 style gun or any 45. Uh, this is a full size five inch barrel. And I kind of mentioned it at the range, but when you start having the commander size or like I know Springfield makes a real small uh, XD or XDM, I forget the model number, but uh, it's a real small carry 45 and the shield's coming out with a 45. Uh, just like this, this one I think is a nine millimeter with a 42. This is a nine millimeter and uh, uh, so I'm not sure all the barrel lengths of the Springfield and and I know they make the, the commander style 1911 and Kimber makes the small ones in the shield But when you start uh, reducing the length of that barrel You may not get the results that I did today. It's just a five inch barrel So when you're pushing a big 230 grain bullet out of there uh, When you start cutting that barrel, you're gonna start cutting velocity out of an already slow moving bullet So I'm not sure about all the expansion and if you're gonna get the results that we did today So that might be something to take into consideration if you're carrying a 45 the shorter uh, barrel just kind of keep an eye on that 
And uh, again, we're not trying to talk you into a 45 or out of a 45, but to say the 45 isn't a viable carry around uh, or it's outdated, let me tell you, it served the military for 70 years in a wonderful capacity. I'm a huge 1911 fan. And um, to, to say it's not a viable round for carry, I simply uh, don't think that's the case at all. Now, if you don't want to carry it, that's up to you. That's totally your opinion. But, uh, but, but uh, you know, because I'll be honest with you, I don't carry this gun. Even though I'm a big guy, this gun's too big for me to carry. But uh, you go to the range, you try it. If you've got a shorter barrel, you, know, you try it for yourself. Go to the range and, and try different rounds, different ammo. Because, like I said, we're not trying to sell you anything. We just want to keep you safe. But if you've got a 45 and you're carrying it and people's telling you it's not a viable round or it won't keep you safe or it won't uh, defend you and your family, uh, you don't have to argue with them. But in the back of your mind, uh, I, I believe you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. So uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for everybody that watches these videos and comments. We, uh, we've never met these people. You know, Douglas McCullough and Jack Hahn and Paul Harrell and Stephen and Chris and all these people that uh, uh, comment and you just make our day when you comment. We we got a small channel, but uh, we do. We always wanted to feel like a, a friendly visit when you comment. It feels like, uh, you know, like I said, I've never met those people, but it's just, uh, uh, I just appreciate you watching, appreciate your kind comments. If you like this video, if, if you like what we're doing, uh, <clears throat> like us, give us the thumbs up button, share it with your friends uh, on Twitter, Facebook, uh, and I appreciate it. If there's any other things you'd like to see or demonstrate or want us to do or talk about or shoot or whatever, just let us know and we'll do our best to accommodate you. May God bless you, the Kentucky Patriot. Signing off.